Good morning from the Lake Seven, where we spent our last night. It was freezing, but the sun is already coming out, so it's nice. Which is great, because we want to get to Megri, which is about well, only 300 kilometers down south of Armenia, to the border of Iran. Fair to say that it's mountainous. If we are lucky, we can spend the night where the trade caravans rested back in the days of the Silk Road in the Caravansaray Orbeliani. Let's hope we can make it there. Yeah. Okay, let's so go. let's go. Join us again on our amazing world bike tour. After cycling about 7000 kilometers all the way from Germany, we now explore the rough south of Armenia, where we hop back on the saddle to get over our winter blues after an unexpectedly long break. We will explore beautiful landscapes, meet wonderful people and even visit an ancient cave town. Also, it is winter and this is a very, very mountainous country. This morning we could not use our uh, stove because, yeah, I don't know, I had to change some parts that deteriorate because gasoline is aggressive. I did some more maintenance, still did not work. So I assume maybe it's not enough gasoline inside the fuel tank. So this is the next thing we try, refueling, so that hopefully later today we can use our stove because it will be very cold. So. Something warm would be great to have, right? That is typical for Armenia. So the two gentlemen obviously did not let us pay for our fuel. Iran! I think this is where we need to go. 50 meters? I don't think so. 50... Yeah, well, it's a little bit more than 50. Maybe there's a stream missing or two, 250 miles or something. Okay, so we need some breakfast. We try to find some bakery or something here in Martuni and also do some shopping. Uh, because up there on the mountains will be nothing. Um, and then we have to do some climbing. Oh yeah, pizza. I want pizza. Oh, and a sandwich. And then pierogi with potato meat. So this is basically a dough filled, in this case with meat, and then deep fried. Very fatty, very nutritious. Exactly what we need to get up the mountain. <laughs> very simple, but tasty. Are you wondering how I got so chubby again? Well, that happens when I try to eat my frustration away. Since the last episode, seven months have gone by in reality. A lot has happened, some unfortunate things too, and so this episode is also about things not working out as intended. For context, we'll do a quick recap why you can admire the beautiful Vardenes mountain range. We reached Armenia with the plan to stay with my family, finally start editing all these videos, and to continue our journey through Iran and beyond three months later. That clearly did not work out. At first, we struggled settling into the stationary lifestyle. For a couple weeks, hosting plenty of other travelers, some of which we had met on the road before, was a welcome distraction for us. When we started working, our laptop died. This is bad news in Armenia, and it took weeks to get a decent and affordable replacement. On a more positive note, we were invited to a morning show on Armenian TV, which was an exciting and refreshing experience. Good morning. Welcome to Armenia. Welcome to our studio. Matthias, how are you? 
Kitsch, kitsch, kitsch. Kitsch, kitsch, kitsch. Then suddenly it was war again. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Armenians and Azeris have been fighting over the disputed Karabakh region. But this was different. Azerbaijan shelled, bombarded and invaded undisputed parts of Armenia. Two almost sleepless weeks later, hundreds had been killed, thousands displaced. Around that time we also started to get news about protests in Iran over the death of Gina Masa Amini. Unable to work on the videos and generally unsure about how to proceed with our journey, we instead helped Alf's cousin. He lives in the countryside and just three kilometers from the border with Azerbaijan. And so we harvested potatoes still under the echo of machine gun fire. With dozens of filled 50 kg sacks standing on the field, he would joke, at least everything is tidy if they come now. It looks so peaceful now that it is hard to imagine what happened barely 30 kilometers from here a couple of months ago. About it. We are at 2200 meters right now. Ooh, beautiful here. Yeah. Very beautiful. That it's not frozen. Directly oh. from the mountains. Oh. Huh? Mm. Mm. Cold? Cold but tasty. Oh, really good. There are five mountain passes between Sivan and Migri at the Iranian border, with this one being only the second highest. Seeing everything covered in snow and ice, we begin to realize that we will need quite some luck with the weather to make it. We had to go though. After months of working on videos and freelance jobs day in and day out, we could not stay inside any longer. We also struggled about how to continue with our journey regarding Iran. Despite the protests, it was and still is possible to enter the country. But according to our contacts, most people would be afraid to even talk to foreigners. No surprise, given the regime and its minions had started killing countless protesters, jailing them by the thousands. Reluctantly, we eventually came to the conclusion that it was not a good time to go to Iran. With Russia waging this brutal war in Ukraine, we don't want to cycle through it either. As native Armenian, Av could not enter Azerbaijan, even if its land borders were open. With the overland routes and the Caspian Sea blocked, it seems like taking a plane to Kazakhstan might be our only remaining way to Central Asia. But first... Oh God! We are fighting our way up to Selim Pass. We are at uh, almost 2400 meters altitude. Uh, one can feel that the air starts to get thinner. Whew. Right now I don't want to imagine how 4,000 meters feel like. Whew. But it looks absolutely stunning. Look at this. So we've just made it over Selim Pass. We are at 2,400 meters altitude and there is the caravansaray. We were thinking to spend the night. Now we will see if we manage that or not. Because if not, then we have to go downhill for 1,500 meters. It might be difficult to get our bicycles here because the snow is melting. And I really... Oh, oh, shit. I really don't want to get wet feet. It might be possible here, but... Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh my god. No. No. That's not gonna work. Uh oh. Shit. Oh shit. No. Uh uh. Uh uh. Now I have wet feet. Dang it. Yeah, it's very unfortunate, but my socks are wet now and there's no other way to get there. That would obviously have been epic 
to camp here, wake up with this view. Sunset here, wow. Yeah, but it's not possible. We still can try to find a nice spot somewhere here on the way down. We'll see. Oh no, wet socks! Unfortunately, this prevents us from sleeping in this 14th century Silk Road caravansarai. We can't camp outside at this altitude, as temperatures might plummet well below minus 10 degrees tonight. As we don't know whether the conditions inside the caravansarai are even viable, we don't want to risk getting all wet and very cold feet. We are exhausted, it is already late afternoon, and we hurry to get our tent up at a lower altitude. If there's one thing that you don't want... So now we are gonna fix this and try to figure out what we can do. Maybe we can even continue like this. Well, MacGyver once said there's nothing you can't fix. Matthias was very, very frustrated with the tent. And now I think he is gonna get the second nervous breakdown today. I literally did all the maintenance you can do on this MSR stove. Or it would be the next MSR equipment that fails us. Our tent pole was probably our mistake. Let's see. Seems like we started bending the tent poles before they were properly joined together. Luckily, the MacGyver fix using duct tape and cable ties works well enough. At almost 2000 meters, it was a very cold night again, so we are looking forward to descending into the Yeregis Valley. Soon after, we get invited to a hot coffee. You can also invite us for some coffee. If you are interested, we can also make some episodes about our filming and editing process, finances, equipment, you name it. In very short though, creating this kind of content is hard work and costs a lot of money. So if you can help, please check out buymeacoffee.com slash aworldbiketour and send us as much coffee as you can afford. This will obviously get you our eternal gratitude and will enable us to continue and share this journey with you a little longer. Unfortunately, our very peaceful, quiet time will come to an end as we enter the main road that uh, goes from Yerevan to Iran. It's just one road Hello. that goes through all of the country. Those two gentlemen just gave us a package of some food. They waited for us. Very nice. So this road is really busy because it's the only road to Iran. So every other truck is from Iran actually. Being landlocked and with the borders of Turkey and Azerbaijan remaining closed, trade with and through Iran is absolutely essential for Armenia. We just filled up water. We did almost 50 kilometers today. Um, but the sun is going down soon and the weather forecast says that there will be rain in the morning so we're trying to find some place for our tent with a roof let's see how that goes uh. That looks interesting, like an abandoned rest stop or something. Ooh. I think this was a rest stop, yeah. Oh, let's check it out. Well. Okay. 
Are found something great. Oh, they even have toilets. Maybe they're open. Nice. Well, well maybe not. Oof. <laughs> The spot here is great. We are closer to the road, but uh, we hope that there won't be many cars during the night. And now Matthias is trying to cook some water. Matthias, what are you making? Uh, tea or hot chocolate or tea. We both are tired from the day before. Our muscles and fitness have deteriorated greatly over the past few months, but we are glad to have found a proper roof over our heads and settle in. This valley is narrow and steep, so now in the beginning of March, the sun sets early. Time for dinner. So this is Javier already. Uh, has nothing to do with Caviar. <laughs> it is a mash of uh, eggplant, tomato, peppers, onion, garlic. Very, very tasty. You can buy it in these jars for about, what was it, 1000 gram? No. 800 gram? 600 gram. So this is like 1 euro 50. It's that cheap and very delicious. So we'll have it with some bread and some sausage and some uh, spicy pepper and some paneer, Armenian cheese. Mm. Mm. So we could not sleep until like one in the morning because uh, trucks were going down the road really loud all the time. Then at two in the morning a truck, Iranian truck, stopped right there with the engine running. So after half an hour I got up made him understand that we cannot sleep. Then it started raining and obviously we chose the roof that's not uh, functioning properly. So now everything is sort of wet anyways. And it's raining properly. The road is soaked so it's not good. After waiting for an hour in the hope the rain would stop, we eventually start riding anyway. Not great at just 8 degrees. This is the lower part of the valley, and the M2 highway will now start to climb up to Borotan Pass at 2344 meters. And we are a bit worried, but suddenly. The name, ha! Mati? Will this work? Uh, I hope so. Ah. Yes, Matthias. Yes, Germanatia. Germanatia. Ayo. Right, Mama? Ah, Mama i Korea kam. We had a 20 kilometer, 1000 meter climb ahead of us. I was not sure if we could make it um, in our condition because I feel a little sick and it's going to rain for the coming five days or so. Now we are on our way. Let's hope our bikes in the back of the lorry make it um, all right. <laughs> Oh, here. This is the gate to Region Suniki. 
Vorotan Pass is the gate to Zunik, the southernmost province of Armenia. We would have loved to pass this iconic monument representing the dance of the mountains under our own power. Realistically though, at this day cycling up here would have been a bad idea. We are so lucky that Uncle uh, picked us on the road. Also he said that here in the region there's wolves um, and sometimes they kill people. After another hour drive in the warm cab of his heavy lorry, we reach Arthur's hometown Goris. His dad then shows us his childhood home, where the family used to produce linseed oil using this ox-powered mill. He also says that the natural stone of the walls is held together by a mortar consisting of lime, egg white and egg yolk. Step ojaha. Femna, step boveli. Jezna lozele, gomesho jezna lozele, neskara parrasarila. Hm. <laughs> I don't know what's the name, with potatoes? Well, actually this is not a pierogi, but a pirashki, a common fast food in Armenia and most of the former Soviet Union. Here you can also see the traditional preparation of lavash, a very thin flat bread. While we do a variety of breads in the country, we really can't have too much lavash. We like it so much that we even have several dishes where lavash is a key component. It is also customary for the mother of the groom to feed the newlywed couple lavash and honey as a wish of good fortune, fertility and sweetness for the couple. And just to be sure, we also dry it, so that we can store more of it, should these ladies need a break. The next day we visit Old Khanzoresk, just 15 kilometers east of Goris. Nowadays, livestock walk in and out of rooms carved into the cliffside, grazing among the ancient rock cave homes of this multi-level village built into the soft volcanic rocks. Archaeological evidence suggests habitation goes back over a thousand years, ending only recently in the 1950s. In the early 1900s, Old Khanzoresk was the largest village in eastern Armenia with roughly 8,300 residents in 1,800 homes. Each of these cave dwellings might have housed between 12 and 25 people, some remarkably preserved with original furnishings intact. They were all stacked upon one another. One house roofs was the yard of the one above. Therefore the inhabitants used a complex system of tunnels, ropes and ladders to reach all parts of their community. The village also had seven schools, four churches, three dye works, several leather workshops and dozens other shops. In 1958 the residents moved out with the exact reason being under dispute. Some say the residents were forced out by Soviet leaders who deemed the caves uncivilized. A fate that has befallen many other cave settlements throughout the world. This abandoned cave settlement is just one example of the wonderful discoveries you can make in your own homeland. I had heard about it, but never imagined it to be so impressive. We feel a lot better already and can't wait to see what's ahead of us. It is time to continue our way south, to Megri at the border with Iran. So join us next time where we do just that, cycling up and down stunning mountain passes, visiting long forgotten relics of the Soviet times and even find an adorable companion along the way. 
Hey, we are Aref and Matthias, a couple of independent amateur filmmakers on an unsupported journey around our planet. In late 2021, we sold our belongings and set out to explore, grow and show the world as we see it, in the hope to inspire some people along the way. If you like what we do, it would be great if you could help us out. Editing this type of unscripted and spontaneous documentaries takes a huge amount of time and effort, which is why roughly 50% of our rapidly shrinking budget goes into this channel. On average, we receive about 30 euros from YouTube ads per month, which helps, but is only a fraction of what we actually spend on creating a single episode. We can't continue this much longer, and well, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we just suck at this, and that's fair enough. But if you think otherwise and want to give us more time, here's what you can do. This is crucial for small creators like us. Subscribe if you haven't already. Activate all notifications. Watch each episode to the very end. And of course, like, comment and share them. This will make our content visible to more people and therefore it might become sustainable at some point. In the meantime, you can also join our amazing contributors on buymeacoffee.com slash aworldbiketour. Through Buy Me A Coffee you can support our content creation by topping up our budget. We have several additional terabytes of material and we can tell you with confidence, the best is yet to come. Anyhow, thanks for watching, until next time. And may the wind be in your back.